Hey, I'm Eric Repka. And I'm Stein Ratzloff. We're best friends and ski mountaineers from Lake Tahoe, California. We share a serious passion for exploring the outdoors, adventure storytelling, and having a few beers around a campfire. Last June, we set off to ride our bikes nearly 900 miles while climbing and skiing 12 volcanoes along the way. Oh, and we went a little out of the training for this one. Through rain, snow, and hospital visits, this trip turned out to be one hell of a suffer fest. But no matter how much we're suffering, we always find a way to have fun. Here's the story of our latest adventure. We're on the home stretch. Last state. The biggest mountains, the furthest apart. <laughs> Toss it back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here at our base camp at Mount Adams. Tomorrow's quite special because we're taking all three of our girlfriends up to Mount Adams. And it's quite awesome to have this new experience and share something that we love with all of them. So really looking forward to it. My name's Frankie. I'm from Minnesota. And I'm really stoked to climb Adams with my boyfriend's time. It's only my third time ever snowboarding. So I'm kind of nervous, but you know what? I'll send it. Well, Kyle, I'm kind of nervous. That's like, you're yeah. really close no, to me. <laughs> you need to sign a waiver before you see <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> We're here on Mount Adams. The weather's a little bit better than we expected, just really windy. Yep, the whole crew's on their way up the mountain, and yeah, excited to be out here. We're up for an early morning departure, riding to Mount Rainier. Uh, tomorrow's the only weather window. We have about 50 miles to our base camp, about 6,000 feet of climbing to get there. And then once we get there, we got like a five mile hike with an additional 5,000 feet of climbing. So today could actually be one of our biggest days. Ah, at it again. My actual God, this is just a rough ride. Almost there! Freaking hell! We just made it. The trailhead. On right here. Oh god. So, time to go climbing. How are you feeling, Eric? I feel great. Are you ready to climb right here? I'm ready. Let's take a little load off for a second. Ready to go. Maybe in English. I'm ready in uh, 30 seconds. 30 minutes, where, where are we going? You've got 5,000 feet of climbing left? I'm freezing this, this is concrete just feels like incredible. So, we're skinning in the clouds and it is just after 6.30 and Another 1,300 feet till base camp, so probably an hour. Freezing. Burning. Freezing. We're at our base camp. Right here. Absolutely beautiful. Love the clouds. This is, we set up a mid, because that's the only tent we have, on a little, uh, what'd you call it? 
tent ledge. We tried to dig it out more and we've uh, made it pretty terribly. <laughs> but we only have to be here for how many hours? Like five. Oh God, it's way longer than I thought. Four? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I think we're too tired to care at this point. So this could be one of the rest of things. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What? This is literally my face sleeps here. <laughs> well, we're at Camp Sherman. It's a beautiful sunrise about to happen. The sunrise on Rainier was one of those moments where you're just like, this is kind, this is like, we are absolutely exhausted. Eric and I had been biking and climbing and just the body was just totally worked, but after seeing the sunrise and just the absolute beauty of nature and being up there with some friends, it was like a serious reminder of kind of why we do some of these things and like why you wake up at 1.40 in the morning. Like that morning was so hard to wake up. But it was genuinely so awesome to just have everyone come together and then you're coming up and we're just like sitting there just watching one of the most killer sunrises I've seen in a very, very long time. So, we're 600 feet below the summit of Mount Rainier and now we just got seriously fogged out. We're moving the bottom, so safety is the ultimate goal. We want to get more beer and see our friends and family. <laughs> well, we definitely made the right call turn around. We're descending 2,000 feet and the fog is chasing us. So we gotta get out of here. Well, this is kind of gnarly. But we are getting off of green here. time. That was uh, big. It was fun though. Last night's uh, sleep was one of the worst we've had on the trip, for sure. I put it in the top three. I <laughs> we, got less than an hour. We, we uh, ate cold sardines, cold not cooked top ramen. We did share a bag of beef stroganoff, which is bomb. Ate dried oatmeal and uh, woke up at 1.30 in the morning after one hour of sleep. <laughs> Why do you still have the sardines in your hand? Because it's leave no trace policy, and uh, also the tent smells like absolute hell now. And uh, no one wants to put it in their bag because they smell so bad. So I'm just holding it 10,000 feet. Eric, why do you do this to yourself? Dude, I don't know. I think we thought Rainier was going to be a lot more simple. Now we are going to get on our bikes to ride to Seattle so we can have an off day instead of having to ride tomorrow on the 4th of July. So, we got robbed. And uh, we didn't notice for a few hours because they didn't take everything that I had in my car. They just took like, kind of weird stuff. I thought, until I sort of realized that, oh, like my entire camera bag's gone. And then I was like, oh That had like, all of our cameras in it. And it had our lenses and it had our media. <sighs> Can't help but be a bit put out. <laughs> Seattle. <sighs> so the last couple days have been pretty <laughs> We got robbed, we lost drones, we lost camera gear, we lost passports, we lost cash, we lost all sorts of <laughs> So, that caused a major delay in our trip. We were delayed about two days just trying to figure out the logistics of finding that So that's actually, unfortunately, going to cause us to not be able to go climb and ski Mount Baker. Uh, to some people, it might seem like the end of the world. Some people might think, oh, you guys didn't get to finish the trip. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. The whole point of this trip is to be with our friends and having fun with friends. So now we're gonna go make sure everyone's good. We're gonna go have our wrap party and uh, keep a positive attitude and go enjoy ourselves and celebrate how much work we've done.
We left Seattle and made it to Walla Walla, Washington last night, where a good friend and awesome human being, Chris Figgins, is letting us have our wrap party at his amazing vineyard out here. And the whole crew's here, and we're going to wrap up the Ring of Fire. We're going to drink excessive quantities of fine wine, have some burgers, and uh, watch the sunset over the vineyard, if that sounds appealing to you. My number one advice for anyone wanting to do some, a project similar to this would genuinely be to do it with a team that you really enjoy being around. Do it with your friends. Like, absolutely find a group that you genuinely enjoy being around because, uh, one, <laughs> things get tough. Like, it's, it's inevitable. Like, things will get down and people will be, like, exhausted. There's, there's way, there's many other things that I'd rather be doing right now, but it's like, it's kind of that cohesive unit. Like, you're a team and you have to keep moving and, it's really important to do things with people you enjoy being around. Starting this project, I knew that Eric and Stein were going to have no problem with the mountains they were going to climb. Um, I thought the biking was going to be harder than I thought, but super surprised to see them kind of just destroy the physical end of things to the point where the truck and the trailer became the slow and the weak point. But having them with their mountaineering experience and expertise, as well as Ben, who kind of came in the last minute and he brought and the really helpful second perspective on the, on the camera end of things. And I brought my lovely girlfriend, Dior. And not only did she like surprise me in the fact that she was never out of her comfort zone, uh, she also was like the glue that held the entire trip together. If we hadn't had just like a smiling blonde greeting to every long day and a beautiful handcrafted meal in misery, that we were all in, I think that we all would have given up a lot sooner, honestly. I definitely learned how to sit in a car for a long time. <laughs> Do you want to know what support looks like? That is what support looks like. It's our we're <laughs> it was all crazy and spontaneous and unorganized at times, but you know, sometimes that's that's the best times. Is like it's just spontaneous and you just hit the road and you just see what happens. It's a crazy adventure. You're always going to get thrown stuff at you that you don't expect, and it's it's kind of how you deal with it. And that's all. That's super cliche, but it really hit home this trip because we had hospitalization, we had mosquito festivals, and freaking uh, God, the, the list goes on. And we just had to keep smiling and keep going. Even though we were kind of a band of misfits, we all found our our, our place, and we all worked hard. And overall, I think that the team dynamic was as good as it can get. Well, my favorite moments of the, were honestly just those moments cycling where I was realizing how lucky we were and how happy I was and how connected I was to all people around us. It was definitely, like I said, challenging about this trip was the part like about doing something with family and friends and realizing like the style of trip we're on and uh, like how much it would have meant to my dad to be with us. Like, it really meant a lot. And I'm glad that's, I think, was my dad's oh, lesson to me, I think, in his life and also on this ride. This was my big takeaway. It's like, hey, life isn't forever. So enjoy it while you're here. I had my dad's ashes in the front of my bag the entire time. I brought him up every single mountain to climb, show my brother places that I've always wanted to go with. I got to spend some of the best moments of life with my best friends. We rode 800 something miles, climbed a load of mountains. <laughs> we did it. We actually did the thing we said we were gonna do. That was sick. Now it's time to go party. Time to celebrate. Ben, what is that? Butt lube. <laughs> Not what you think. It's for chafing. Do you want I want you to give me a, a 30 second advertisement. Three, two, one. My name is Ben Farrar. We are in Squaw Valley right now, and this is butter. You basically apply to the nether regions upon major chafing or before chafing to prevent any sort of painful uh, redness, and it works great. 
This is our uh, jammy butter and lubricants. Make sure you're not chafe. And we've created a special uh, case just for it right now because it's the most valuable thing we have, I think, and I don't want it to get crushed. So I've made its own protective container. It arrives well within arm's reach. Wait, wait, wait. You're doing during riding application? Yes, I've been doing during riding application. A little bit of everything. 